Hello and welcome to the programme. It says it's a church which carries out good work for the benefit of the community. But critics claim it's a cult with the sole aim of making money. With only 87 members according to the last census, Scientology's plans to grow in this country might seem like mission impossible. So why is it spending huge sums here and should we be worried that it is? Rita O'Reilly has been taking a close look at the claims and counterclaims that surround Scientology. Hello and welcome. You've probably heard of Scientology. There's a lot of talk about us and we get it. I think it's psychobabble. It's just the cult. I would actually like to see Scientology moving out of our country, not into it. So what do you say? We need to clean this place up? Huh? Yeah! Scientology has tried to make it big in Ireland before. Now it's back with a prestige office in Dublin's Merrion Square, a centre in the suburbs, and a development it hopes to open as a drug rehab facility in County Meath. Why is Scientology putting millions into Ireland? Is it just another church, or should we be more concerned? Frankly, whatever you have heard, if you haven't heard it from us, I can assure you, we are not what you expect. On Sunday afternoons, in the run-up to Christmas, Scientology hosts a winter wonderland at its centre in Fairhouse. Hundreds of members of the public attend. These are free events. In October, another Sunday, and Scientology has thrown another party, celebrating its first anniversary in Fairhouse. Though this was also free and publicly advertised, Attendance seems low. Are you a member? Yeah. I like it. You like it? Have you been in there before? Yeah. And are you a Scientologist or are you just an ordinary member of the public? Just, just an ordinary member, not a Scientologist. A PR professional is acting on Scientology's behalf. It's kind of a, a private event, you know. It's a private event, but it was advertised on Eventbrite. For, for, for to get the guests, yeah. It's all a bit awkward. Scientology had indicated that they would do an interview for this report, but in emails from its PR rep and its solicitor, it then said it would participate with written statements only. It wanted read out in full, and its PR rep said Primetime had a malicious agenda. Traditional churches are embedded in communities like Furhouse and Tala. Why not Scientology? It says its real story is simple. A modern religion addressing spirituality in a practical way, bringing new solutions which don't involve drugs, conflict or violence, but include tools and knowledge to deal with relationships, communication, motivation and general life improvement. But in Beliver County Meath, it's having an awkward moment too. A Scientology group, Narconon, has spent millions building there on foot of permission granted for a nursing home. Narconon wants to open a residential drug rehab unit instead. Two years ago, Meath County Council planners agreed it could avail of a legal exemption from planning but a community group and Trim Municipal District Council appealed to onboard Planola. And they won. The board ruled that drug rehab is a change of use and is not exempt from planning. Narconon must apply. We fought the system and uh, we, we, we won uh, uh, because we were right. And uh, this should not have gone ahead without it going through planning. It's a setback for Narconon. To open the building, it must either appeal to the High Court or follow the board's order and put in a planning application. Either way, it's facing delay. Everybody was excited about a nursing home, and now no nursing home, a drug rehab. Like, you know, it's just not acceptable in our little village. 90% of the children and youth in this village use the community centre. They have a creche directly across the road from it. I have a little preschool beside it and you have the primary school. This is the wrong thing in the wrong place. 
anything that would be a benefit to the village. Narconon, it's not. They're a tool for recruitment for Scientology and to me, you know, it'll never be acceptable. Narconon says it is trying to salvage people from drugs and alcohol and that anyone who objects is clearly against saving people from these scourges. Narconon is part of Scientology. In Beliver, it wants to offer people with drug addiction a regime designed by L. Ron Hubbard, Scientology's creator. Then, of course, there's all else he bestowed to this world, Narconon, with a whole array of drug rehab tech and a greater number of new centers opening this year than ever in history. L. Ron Hubbard was a U.S. fiction writer. He's well known for claiming that people are infested with the spirits of ancient aliens. And they had elected a fellow by the name of Zemu, and he took the last moments he had in office to really goof the flu. It's a claim worthy of the science fiction he wrote. Pick them up, one after the other, rat -a -tat -tat -a -tat 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 -tat. They boxed them up in boxes, threw them into space planes. But there's something that he's less well known for. He opposed all drugs, including prescribed medication. And his solutions for drug addiction and mental health are beset with controversy and doubt. Scientology insists it does not oppose all medication, but Zeni Bondo had no drug problem. Last year, Scientologists persuaded him to try one of its solutions, a course it claimed would clear his body of toxins. At its Fur House Centre, he paid over 2,000 for the course called Purification. It's also designed by Mr. Hubbard. They won't let you alone, you know, till you pay them, actually, you know? They are like, uh, like they come after you with different words. Zenny first went to a doctor in central Dublin. He passed him as medically fit. While he was on the course, he never saw a doctor again. Then, at the centre in Fairhouse, Scientologists directed him to take high milligram doses of vitamins and minerals. The first day you go 100, second day you go 200, and you go to 400, and you go again 800, 800, 1600. When I finished the third week, then I got the 5,000, you know, so it was, was for nearly a week, you know, with 5,000. Dr. Michael Scully looked at the mega doses Zenny was on and took niacin as just one example. The recommended daily intake is of the order of 16 milligrams a day for an adult 18 years and above. So between 16 milligrams a day and 3,500 milligrams a day, there's a significant disparity. Zenny felt generally unwell and his skin reddened. For niacin in particular, if you're taking excessive quantities over relatively short periods, one can develop significant medical complications, sometimes quite acutely. Zenny says the regime also gave him severe headaches, but the Scientologists told him not to take headache tablets. They say we're not using them because we are anti-psychiatry, anti-things like that, you know, which they don't want it any tablets, you know, to be used, you know. As part of the regime, Zeni also had to spend five hours a day in a sauna. He says that when he told Scientology he was unwell, instead of referring him to a doctor, they quizzed him for hours under what they call ethics. Most of the time, you know, they just say, you go to ethics because you didn't sleep well. You go to ethics because you didn't took all your vitamins today, you know. Scientology says that when he finished the purification course, Zenny reported that he was happy with the results. It says that he did not follow the proper regimen of the programme. It claims that a combination of exercise, sauna and high levels of vitamins and minerals eliminate drug residues and other toxins from the body's fatty tissues. In so far as drug addiction and assisted withdrawal are treated by sweating out residues, that's frankly without any scientific basis. Narconon's detox is similar to the purification course, but it's longer, costlier and is targeted at people with drug or alcohol addictions. In a statement, the HSE told Primetime Scientology's treatment has no standing and it and Narconon's interventions may be potentially harmful. 
But Scientology says Narconon is a proven and effective drug-free rehab. It says it's recognised by experts, medical doctors and psychiatrists around the world. But what it calls Narconon's drug-free, non-medical process, others call cold turkey. Scientology wouldn't be the only church that offers the cold turkey approach. Our experience has been that it's singularly unsuccessful and it's highly risky and that many people accidentally and unintentionally overdose and die. The risk of overdose if addicts return to drugs even after drug-free rehab in recognised facilities is 10 to 13 times higher, Dr Scully says. Narconon says it's shocking that certain people would object and that it would expect its drug and alcohol rehab to be welcomed with open arms. I would have concerns about Narconon's underlying worldview because the model was developed by Mr Hubbard and perhaps was outdated in the 1950s. It very certainly doesn't chime with any understanding of brain functioning as we understand it in 2018. Scientology's plans to provide services in Beliver through Narconon was raised in the doll, but the Taoiseach's response highlighted a loophole. I would certainly uh, be absolutely of the view uh, that the only people who provide services with respect to addiction uh, should be people who are uh, pro appropriately qualified and appropriately licensed to do so. In fact, in Ireland, no licensing or qualifications are needed to provide drug detox services. Anyone can do it. Narconon pointed us to the UK, saying it was registered with the Care Quality Commission there. The Commission confirmed this to prime time, but a spokesperson said it regulates it for accommodation with personal care only and does not inspect or regulate Narconon's Substance Misuse Rehab Programme or judge its effectiveness. Like its approach to drugs, Scientology's attitude to one of the central issues of today, mental health, is one that many people find deeply disturbing. Scientology wants to rid the planet of war and immorality, but also to rid it of Hubbard's own personal obsession, insanity. Scientology is for an able guy like you, or like me. He banned what he called the insane the insane, and so forth, somebody else can have them. They've already failed. His ban lives on. It was written into the company constitution of Scientology's Irish mission. Dismissed by medical science as a quack, Mr Hubbard went on the attack. Top of his enemy list, psychiatry. Psychiatry has to do with the insane, and we have nothing to do with the insane whatsoever. Journalist Tony Ortega has reported on Scientology for over two decades. Scientology's hatred for psychiatry comes directly from L. Ron Hubbard's own hatred for psychiatry. They believe they can replace all mental health care with their own practices. From here on out, we go for the juggler, as in the whole foundation of modern psychiatric thinking. In its statement, however, Scientology says it fully supports medical doctors, medicine and medical treatment. But it says its campaigns undoubtedly aggravate vested interests and agendas. However, behind its and Hubbard's approach lies his core deception. L. Ron Hubbard had issues himself. US records show that in the years before he set up Scientology, Hubbard sought psychiatric treatment and was himself on medication for serious mental problems. In 1951, he wrote to the FBI informing on what he called communist suspects in his own organisation and naming his then wife, Sarah Northrop, as one. The FBI agent who interviewed him considered him to be a mental case. In 1956, Hubbard was briefly based in Merrion Square. By then, his wife had filed for divorce, describing him as hopelessly insane. The FBI director, J. Edgar Hoover, wrote, his recent letters have been unanswered inasmuch as he is considered obviously a mental case. 
Critics say Hubbard built his paranoia into his organization's structure, in particular its Office of Special Affairs, OSA. Scientology's Merrion Square office, a stone's throw from government buildings, is said to be controlled by OSA from the UK. From there, through front groups like its Citizens Commission for Human Rights Ireland, Scientology continues to oppose psychiatry and most medication. Scientology seems at times unbelievably cruel that when we have medications that can alleviate chronic pain, can alleviate epilepsy, can assist with helping with mood or anxiety disorders, that they would, out of, you know, a sincerely held but false principle, in my view, deny people the benefit that may come with the use of those medicines if they're used correctly. Victoria Britain is concerned that hostility to psychiatry and to most medication can lead to tragedy. She's the mother of a young Irish-American, Kyle Brennan. His death in 2007 was found to be suicide. Kyle was not a Scientologist. I was never in Scientology. He could be anybody's child. Courts in the USA found that Scientologists were not culpable in Kyle's death, but his mother remains concerned at the influence of Scientology in the time leading up to it. Kyle, he was um, your typical 20 years old in college, a little bit nerdy, and, and I'm going to try not to get too emotional, but it, it meant a lot to him. So it was his, his, his dream to come to Ireland to learn about his heritage. He never made it to Ireland. He had been seeing a psychiatrist and was on medication for depression and anxiety. But Kyle had not been taking it in the days before he died. Although the courts found that Kyle's father, a committed Scientologist, was not culpable in his son's death, he did confirm that Kyle was not taking his medication. It was something he voluntarily gave me because he didn't like it and it made him sick. I mean, that's just the truth of the matter. The Church of Scientology is not just against um, illegal drugs. They're against all drugs. And these are vulnerable people. And it's going to end tragically. It's just a matter of time. Scientology, however, told Primetime that Kyle Brennan's tragedy was a sad example of the results of psychotropic drugs. Depends what you do with and in Scientology. Though it strongly rejects it, Scientology's reputation precedes it. Several former members have accused it of manipulation and oppression. With that reputation, why do people join it? Tell him to stop. Why do you tell him to stop? Pete Griffiths was in a punk band when he ran a Scientology office in North England in the 1990s. What do people want? If you could give a person a wish or two wishes, what would they want? And I think, well, I'd like to live forever and have superpowers. And essentially, that's what Scientology supposedly gives you. Immortality and superpowers that you only get if you do Scientology. And its sales pitch? You simply ask a person, what would you like to improve? You could even just straight out ask, what's ruining your life? And they might say anything. Oh, girlfriend problems, wife problems, how do you raise kids? I have problems with money, I have pro You know, whatever you name, the Scientology response is, we can help you with that. L. Ron Hubbard called his methods Dianetics, Publicly, he sold it as a kind of mental therapy. But privately, he saw another use for it. He wrote to the US Justice Department, Dianetics indicates ways of controlling people. And he offered it to the US Defense Department as brainwashing. Since Hubbard's time, Scientology has used a prop, an e-meter. It emits a tiny electrical current. U.S. courts long ago ordered that an e-meter must carry strict disclaimers. These days, Scientology calls it a religious artefact and admits, in itself, the e-meter does nothing. 
Internally, though, members pay around $10,000 for a new one. Former members accuse Scientology of using hard sell tactics laid down by Hubbard on its own members. They say that members and missions are also pitted against each other to turn in the highest weekly sales statistics for courses, books and donations. I was in direct competition with the mission in Dublin. You get points based on your statistics and stats down in Scientology is a big no-no because the most important statistic is gross income. Thank you very much. Pete Griffiths now lives in Mayo. He left Scientology in 1994 after seven years, but he says it took double that again before his mind fell free. For 14 years, Scientology definitely did not leave me. All the stuff that I'd been told, all that mental conditioning was still in place. I didn't question any of that. Outside the organisation, Mr Griffiths turned to activism. Scientology claims he publicly apologised to two of its members in court last year for an incident he filmed in 2014. Tried to, tricked or destroyed. Give me those. A fellow campaigner at the time grabbed leaflets from Scientologist Sabrina Short Collins as she was distributing them with another member, shown here using a phone camera. Mr Griffiths was found complicit in the assault of the two Scientologists and they were awarded damages. I don't think following them down the street and harassing them was the way to go and I regret that. Ms Short Collins is a director of Scientology's Fur House Centre. The same court found that she had defamed Mr Griffiths a year earlier when the judge said she sent vile, false allegations about him to the principal of a school where he gave a talk on cults. He was awarded damages. John Dignan, another former member, describes Scientology as oppressive. He grew up in Cork and had already tried two religions and almost joined the priesthood when he was approached by Scientologists in 1980 Stuttgart. I was a very, very, very troubled, quite distressed young fella. And they said, come with us. And then walked me up to a Scientology centre and in Stuttgart. And that was it, really, for the next 20 odd years. <laughs> That's how I got in. <laughs> The hook that got him in the door was Scientology's offer of a free personality test. How are you doing? Ah, free personality test there. He was soon reading Hubbard's books. I wasn't reading anything outside of Scientology. It works like that. It programs you. It, it blocks off any interference from the outside very, very quickly. He could not afford courses, but Scientology welcomed his labour. Working unpaid, he could get the training free or on tab. The training routines are called, and these are hypnotic. I've sat in sessions like that for five, six hours. It breaks down some natural self-protection mechanisms that you've got in you. You have to sit there absolutely still and be screamed at constantly. So it makes you quite into a very malleable human being very quickly. Mr. Dagnan was eventually put in charge of all international Scientology missions controlled under St. Hill in the UK. That included Dublin. He suggests the organisation he describes is one that feeds on its own followers. Well, I was told, bam, 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 you know, Tom is going to get a, a second mortgage on the house and say it's a car loan or something like that, or, or um, and he's going to give the money to us, you know what I mean? actual fraudulent bank loan forms. John Dagnan is one of several ex-Scientologists who accuse it of undue influence and illegal actions. He recalls just one example. Scientology was sued in England and had to find £1 million sterling to settle. He says its Office of Special Affairs sent him out to get the money. It involved an awful lot of very, very bad things that I wouldn't want to talk about too much because I don't know if I can still be implicated for having done some things, but persuading people to hand over huge amounts of money, essentially, was what it involved. Uh, involving, it involved making good people slave 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I mean, with, with no sleep, in order to get some money, you know? 
made them do that, yeah, made them do things, made people um, sell their pensions, made people sell off any endowment policies, you know, education funds, all that kind of stuff. In its statement to RTE, Scientology said all its churches are non-profit bodies, with all funds donated and used to support good works. They are manned by volunteers and exist only to help people, it said. It gave no response to Mr. Dignan's allegations. There's no sign of such behaviour at Fur House, but ex-Scientologists say it is early days. They point to Zenny Bundo. He was not a member. He was recruited as staff and worked on its opening when David Miscavige launched it in Fur House last year. A month after the launch, Zenny walked out of the centre, minus a job, a girlfriend and thousands in cash. They're not working like a church, you know, they're working like a company, you know, like, to make money. Months earlier, Zenny had left his work in a Leitrim takeaway to become a staff driver. He says he signed a contract without reading or understanding it. Over two months, seven days a week, working from 7 a.m. up to 11 at night, he drove staff to and from Fur House and worked in the centre's cafe. They say, oh yes, we're going to pay you, we're going to look after, but just we are a bit in a rush now to make everything go good for the opening and, you know. He says that he was paid less than a thousand euro for the time he worked there and got around a hundred euro back for petrol. But Scientology says Zenny had applied to become a religious volunteer. Did you ever hear them say to you that you were a volunteer? Never, ever in my life. It says he had pledged to help people without contemplating any monetary gain. But Zenny says he did expect to be paid and was not a volunteer. Jesus, now I didn't go there, you know, to help other people, you know. <laughs> Scientology claims that Zenny Bondo's participation was terminated within three weeks. But Primetime has seen evidence that Zenny was with it for two months. It also says he sent threatening messages about his ex-girlfriend and was motivated by revenge. Zenny told us, Scientology always wants to protect itself. They're trying to hurt me in my life. With its claim that you can better yourself while making the world better too, Scientology does attract people who want to do good. You feel that you're doing good. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. You know, you wouldn't become a Scientologist for evil reasons. You're doing it because you think you're doing good. Its best-known ambassador is Tom Cruise. So what do you say? We need to clean this place up? Huh? Yeah! Okay. Because we're counting on you. <laughs> okay? All right? Dweller H. Theologian Mike Gard criticises the last government for courting Mr. Cruz in 2013. We opened the door to them when we gave uh, Tom Cruise honorary Irish citizenship during the, the last period of, of the last government. We've checked you out, that you're the real deal. <laughs> I'm you're Irish, Irish. You're, Irish. I want. you're one of us <laughs> and you're very welcome. In Ireland, Scientology is not a registered charity, nor is it tax exempt. It is just a registered company in the business of religion. And for an organization that sells success, it seems to have a record of relative failure. Let me introduce to you Mary Johnston here on my... In the 1990s, Mary Johnston was one ex-member who publicly accused it of internal oppression. I was going to give up my business and move to England and work for the church for one billion years. Then, in 2002, Mary sued it for misrepresentation, undue influence and psychological trauma. Scientology settled. It never recovered. Its Irish accounts show it had just four volunteers in recent years. Last year, its Abbey Street office closed in debt its mission unaccomplished. The Irish Constitution protects freedom of religion. 
But Irish law doesn't say what a religion is. It does say what it is not. It says a religion is not a cult or organisation whose principal aim is to profit or that uses oppressive psychological manipulation on its followers or recruits. A definition that some say could fit Scientology. It, however, insists it's a religion and one that has steadily and continuously grown. But its word cannot be taken as gospel. Despite having just 87 Irish members in the last census, in 2014 it made fake claims with fake studios and fake headlines in a Scientology video shown at an internal event. Booklets into Ireland. With truth about drugs spokesmen hitting national airwaves from Ocean FM to BBC Radio and thereby impacting no less than 270,000 listeners, all while newspaper headlines reinforced the message, well, that's how this mission of Dublin accomplished an 85% drop in drug-related crime. Of course, we quickly realised that uh, not only was the presenter in the a video not an Ocean of M presenter, or nor indeed an Ocean of M employee at all. Uh, the studio involved was not an Ocean of M studio, and uh, even crudely they had managed to find one of our car stickers and stick it on the pane of glass in their studio uh, to recreate a situation where it was um, made clear to people at the conference that they had indeed conducted this interview on Ocean of M when they hadn't. Scientology says that since it opened in Furhouse, it's had 40,000 visitors, 130 community events and 1,000 courses started, and that over the last few months, it's given out 90,000 drug booklets in and around South Dublin. Complete 2 million drug awareness booklets in just a week. And to make those it says the demand for more is unbelievable. In Fairhouse, though, local representatives still oppose its presence. As a constituency TD who is forced to deal with the fact that we have a Scientology presence, which I would rather we did not have, I would actually like to see Scientology moving out of our country, not in touch. My message is to stay away, that it's not welcome. Uh, it doesn't bring anything positive to the community. But Scientology is used to negativity. It's prepared to pay the piper and has already spent multi-millions here on facilities, mobile and social media ads, mail shots, leaflets and free events. Scientology says most of the contributors to this programme are known vocal antagonists of it. But those contributors say people should know what lies at the core of Scientology. They threw them into space planes and people were buried in here by the billions and the billions and the billions. A gospel written in the realm of Mr. Hubbard's mind. And that's the story of our founder, L. Ron Hubbard, a true-to-life genius and an honest-to-God modern-day Renaissance man. Rita O'Reilly reporting. We hope you can join us on Thursday when we'll be looking beneath the surface of opposition to asylum centres in this country. For now, though, from everyone on the Primetime team, thanks for watching and good night.